In this video, we're going to go over a 1910 uh, cart with an 1890 drill set up on a Gen 4 display. Um, we're going to go over the cart setup blockage setup and then a, uh, a general documentation setup that's uh, to your Gen 4 if you're new to it. So, if this is the first time um, your blockage in your air cart uh, icons are going to be in the ISO bus VT. So there's always one the default um, shortcut bar down here for ISO bus, or you can go to menu and then applications and get to the same place. So we're going to go into ISO bus VT first, and we're going to set up our cart and then our blockage, and then we'll go into documentation. So they left the layout the same as is uh, on your 2630s if you run them before. Uh, so this should be pretty familiar. And this is the main run page for our for our cart. Um, depending on your cart and your controller, it's going to populate two to three uh, tanks. Uh, we can adjust our rate for a particular meter by hitting the plus and minus button. Um, we can set how much uh, or how high rate it jumps by pushing these buttons under our setup, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, there's also our, our meter clutch button, so if you want to shut off a particular meter, uh, there's our, our clutch buttons. Um, in this particular example, uh, we've got section control, so those bars indicate our sections. So we go down the page, we've got our preset rate boxes. So if you want to quickly switch between your rates that you have for your meters, we can uh, have preset population amounts uh, in that box. So you go right down the page, there's our master clutch button, as well as our fan, uh, our, our set button for our fan. So if we push it, this is where we'd tell it our particular fan speed based off of our uh, particular product. Also shows down there our, our RPM. So uh, from here, we're going to go to our meter setup. So this is going to populate our front rear tank, again depending on our cart size. We're going to go and we're going to set it up for our winner. We're going to tell it we're going to be uh, running our black meters for our front and our rear tank. Make sure you check your front and your rear tank. Make sure that they uh, correctly reflect what's, what's physically on your seater. Um, our variable rate steps, so on our main run page, when we hit that plus and minus button, um, it's going to go up or down a, the specified amount that you put in this box. So if you're just making small adjustments, put a small number in that box. Um, again, you push that plus or minus button, it, it bumps that rate by that amount. Hit our enter button down here in the bottom. This takes us to our our current calibrations. So our MDV is our meter displacement value. So for every time that meter uh, goes around, it spits out a certain amount of product. So custom and current is uh, is if we have a calibration, which we recommend you calibrating for for every product that you put through here. Um, so we would have the custom current box selected. The standard would be a a generic number that Deer has pre-entered for a particular product. So let's go to our calibrate button. Um, and we'll hit on this uh, in more detail in another video. Um, but it, when we go to do our calibrate, we would select the tank or the meter that we're going to be calibrating. Hit our calibrate button. It's going to have us um, make sure that there's plenty of product in the meters. Uh, we're going to go and pull down our switch. It's going to spin around, we're going to get product in it, we're going to dump our bag back in the tank and then put our catch bag, zero our scale with an empty catch bag and then we'll push the arrow button forward, we'll go back there, hold down the, the switch, um, catch the product and then we'd come back and we would enter in how much we actually caught. So again, Stay tuned for our other videos uh, that are specific for the calibrations. But this is the page where we're going to do that. If we go across the top to our variable rate. Um, these are our uh, pre-selected rates that we can enter in. 
Um, note that you've got to have a check marked in that box if we want it to show up on the on the main run page. Down at the bottom, um, these would only be used if we're using prescriptions. Not many people do, but just note if you are using prescriptions, we've got to have a check marks in that box. So now we've gone through our meter setup, we'll go to our cart setup. We're going to go through, for this particular example, it's a 270 bushel cart, which is pretty common for our area. Our remote switch is going to be a height sensor, which is the potentiometer uh, style height sensor. Okay, variable rate, if you've got a hydraulic drive or if you've got that little 12 volt motor on your transmission on a ground drive, uh, we need to make sure the variable rate box is checked. Uh, that way we can switch um, back and forth between our rates from the display. Uh, this TBT means toe between, so again for our area that's, that's the most common setup, so we need to make sure that that box is checked. And if your part is equipped with section command, we want to make sure that box is checked, so that way it enables the display to turn on and off those, uh, those gates back there for your, for your runs. If we go to our tool, and we select our model, so 1890D. Uh, the D indicates that there's a dual rank, um, so we need to make sure we are running both both ranks if that is uh, selected, that 1890D. Put in our width and our row spacing, uh, make sure those are correct. Go to our sensor, across the top, so our tire speed, if you look in your book, there's a chart for your particular tire size. Um, a uh, a generic inches per revolution based on your tire size. If your tire pressure is off, um, your wheel speed could be off as well. And it's recommended that you go and you calibrate. So we hit this. It's pretty simple. We go and we mark out a 400 foot course. Um, and we go and we drive it. And it goes through and it, it walks you through those directions how to go through that. And that will change the inches per revolution when you do that calibration. Go back to our sensor box, go to our height sensor. Um, this is very important. Um, we're not going to paint or plant if our height sensor is not set up correctly. So we need to make sure the separate box is checked. That indicates that it's a potentiometer style height sensor with the little arm that goes up and down. We recommend once a season to calibrate your, your height sensor. Um, and these are the two buttons that you're going to use to do that. So to calibrate we would um, engage our SCV, lift our tool out of the ground all the way up, we'll hit the up arrow, then we hit enter and it sets that um, that sensor is so it knows it's all the way up. Um, when you calibrate your down, I always put it in the ground and pull forward so that way our openers are in the ground as though we were planting. And then hit this arrow button so that way it sets the zero point as being all the way at planting depth. Uh, if we hit this box right here to the right of that, um, this is where we can set our start and our stop height for our recording. Um, and it's going to show as we raise and lower our tool, it's going to show the percentage all the way up and all the way down. Um, that's a good basic diagnostics place to go. As we raise and lower that slowly, it shouldn't have any major jumps for a percentage. On our start record height, I usually, just before the openers uh, touch the ground is where I hit my, uh, my start height. So we hit that button, it sets the current. Um, and our stop height, so in our area there's there's lots of terraces, so if you go over a terrace and your, your cedar stops seeding, um, chances are that our stop height is too low, so we might need to increase that number so that way it goes over that terrace, it lifts it up so it, it's uh, less sensitive to shut it off. So just be aware of that, if it does happen this is where we'd go in and increase this number. So now that we've gone through our meter setup and our cart setup, let's go into our totals. Um, first two tabs are our totals, um, but this calculate uh, button right here, there's some important 
things that you probably ought to know about. We can check our flow, our uh, seat estimator is a calculator of sorts. Um, our area test makes sure that the totals are matching what they should. But this meter verification, so after we recalibrate, I always go in and do a meter verification. We want to make sure that what we're telling that cart to put out is what it's actually putting out. So um, it's pretty simple. You'd select which meter you, you want to, uh, to calibrate or verify. We hit this button right here. This means that we're doing a stationary verification. So we come in here and tell it to spit out either a tenth or a half an acre, depending on your product. But we tell it how much we want to spit out, and we go back there and prime our meters, and then hold down that button, and it's going to spit out what it thinks is this amount. Then we weigh it, and it's just a way to, to make sure that we're we're hitting the rate that we should. Next bar, box over. Uh, this is how we adjust the the full graph, or the uh, the tank gra graph on our main home page. So to correctly reflect what's what's actually in the tank. Go down to our diagnostics. It gives basic information um, about our controllers. Technicians pay close attention to the software versions. We can go and we can see, make sure our lamps are working correctly, fan speed, tire speed. If you're having trouble with maybe rate fluctuating, uh, stuff like that, this is a good one to know about when going to a motor flush. Hydraulic flow through those meters, uh, flush out any contaminants, that sort of thing. But if you're having rate uh, fluctuation, population issues, this is a good place to start going flush out your, uh, your hydraulic system. Uh, section command, if you do have that option, it's a good easy thing to check. Have a guy go, go back there and watch the, the little sole noise as the actuator opens and closes them. We can go and we can tell those particular gates to open up and it's just an easy way to test to make sure that the full actuators and solenoids are working as they should. We're going to go to our blockage setup, so we'll close out of this. Hit that little button down there in the lower right. This brings up all of our ISO bus controllers, so there's our air cart and there's our blockage. So this is our main blockage page, again, it's the, the same one that you're, you're probably used to. It shows the status of all of our sensors, whether they're working, not working, we have them turned off, whatever the case, uh, shows up here in the main run page. So go to our setup on the right. Um, we've got our row fail rate, and if we need to adjust any of these down here, we hit the little hat. Um, need to make sure that these are, are checked as no. We're going to be using our bottom chute, and we set the number of towers. Uh, our blockage type, uh, again in our area, it's a, an all-run blockage system, meaning that there's a, a sensor on each individual row. That's what that all-run means. We hit our next button. Each of our member modules coming out of the factory, they're sequ sequentially numbered. If we ever need to swap them out, move them around, we need to make sure and come in here and make sure the serial number reflects what's actually back there on the air cart. Otherwise, it's not going to read correctly because it's looking for that particular uh, serial number to uh, match that particular number of sensors and rows. So if you ever have to do that, make sure you go in and, and change your serial number to match. Your row fill rate, if we hit this, uh, 20 seeds per second is more sensitive, and the one seed every three seconds is less sensitive. And the book doesn't have any uh, particular recommendations for crop type and what the seeds per second should be. It recommends going as sensitive as possible without causing nuisance alarm. So start sensitive and back it down from there. If it's saying that throwing a, a blockage warning and you go back and check and it's not blocked, you might need to come in here and lower your sensitivity is what that's doing. Now that we've gone through, um, we've done our setup, we hit this guy right here. If, if we have a sensor problem, so on tower, uh, tower 2, um, row 2, um, we know that sensor is not working, we just need to keep planting. We can come in here and we can turn that particular row off, so that way it doesn't beep at us. 
hit the diagnostics on the right side. Um, we can get serial numbers and voltages from the readings, basic diagnostics, that sort of thing. Uh, if we go to test, um, we can do a roll call on all of our sensors. It's kind of like uh, going to school. You can physically be at school, but that doesn't mean that you're actually present. Same thing applies. Is you seeing is the sensor showing up? Is it communicating? Yes, it might, but it still might not be working correctly. But this is a good place to start. So after we get our blockage set up, let's go through a basic AMS. So on your Gen 4s, we'll go to the setup in the bottom left. And if you remember in your 2630, there was the G, the H, and the I. So your resources, your equipment, your documentation. They put that all on one page. So click on our location. And we need to tell the display where we're at. So we select our client farm and field. Edit farm and field. That's all done through this location box. There's usually one of these also on your run pages, your default run pages. Next is our equipment. So we need to tell the, the display what we're, what we're driving, what we're pulling. And we also need to tell it the offsets are, are very important. Coming from the controller, we've told it it's a toe between. That's that little check mark box under the cart setup. Um, our dimensions, uh, especially if we're using section control, it's got to know exactly where the connection points are. It needs to know where the seed drop point is in relation to the, to the cart. We need to make sure all those dimensions are correct. Otherwise, it's not going to paint correctly and it's not going to be turning on and turning off as it should. Lateral offset center, center of rotation is pretty important as well. Under Gen 4's we have this tank configuration option. So we can either set it as individual, um, we can put the same product in each tank and we can switch back and forth or we can run the same amount out of each tank and hit our total rate. So this is kind of new with Gen 4 which is kind of handy something to be aware of, that's that's now an option. Work points, again, we need to make sure it knows where our different connections, turn points, all that are. Go ahead and hit save. Under our tractor, there are also offsets. So if we hit that little pencil icon, um, it needs to know where the receiver is in relation to the tractor and the axle and the connection point. So we would change it there under the tractor. I'll hit OK. So it's going to populate under our work summary for each tank. It's going to have a product set up. So you have a product application. You're putting fertilizer out of your front tank. It's going to show up as a product application. You'd go in and you'd set your product and everything under there. But this is the same as the documentation on our 2630s. If we do not get everything entered in, it's not going to paint for us. Uh, if we go to our rear tank, we're missing a variety. If it doesn't have a variety, it won't paint. And that was the same as, as in your 2630s. Come in here and we select our variety. So with the Gen 4s, it's nice they put everything on one page. That's way you, you go to one place and you know everything you need to do in order to, to document. With that uh, said, it's recommended that you go in and you create some custom run pages for your seeder. So you'd go in and uh, under the page layout and you'd add your different modules. It seems how it's all under the ISOBUS VT. It's nice to go in and, and create different run pages. If you have any questions or you run into problems, uh, feel free to let us know.